Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Hardcore. Now in the last episode we built the magnificent cathedral behind us and well the surrounding areas are not looking as magnificent so we'll be taking a look at that today. And I'm going to be trying to do things a little bit differently than the way I normally do them. So first let's grab our chicken and then let's take a look at what we've got to work with now as you can see it is looking absolutely fabulous over there and the area over here is looking absolutely terrible. Now, I've already started removing the big spruce trees when I did my screenshot for the previous episode and we'll be removing the other one as well and the cathedral is looking absolutely amazing it's all done um well and the cathedral is looking amazing it's all done and we can now move on to the terrain surrounding it. Now the first thing I'm going to need is a blank canvas to start from and in order to do that I'm going to need some dirt but fortunately we have tons and tons of the stuff. I can never seem to miss that door. I'm already putting back all of the stuff that I used from the cathedral build so we should have plenty of dirt and yeah just look at that 100% chock full so we can grab I think I'll just grab a shulker box full of the stuff for now because there is really a lot of leveling, a lot of walling and a lot of terrain work to be done. So let's fill this bad boy up. And with over 2000 metric tons of dirt in our hands, we can get started. But the first thing we need to do is remove this tree over here. Now this area here has also served as my spruce farm from day one. And uh, well, we'll need to find a new place to make a new spruce farm, but that's all right because I think this area is going to be looking amazing and as I said I'm going to try and do things a little bit differently today. But as usual it all starts with a blank canvas. And there we go we have removed all of the trees we've removed all of the stone and stone brick blocks and it's time to place some dirt. Now I need to raise this entire area up to this level and that might take a while so let's jump into a time lapse. And our canvas is done and as I said I'm going to be doing things a little bit differently than the normal today and what brought this on was I've been watching a lot of videos by B00 or B dubs as he is more commonly referred to and the guy is an absolute artist. Now I'm not necessarily going to be using any of his techniques or ideas but I'm just going on the inspiration that he's given me to be better at what I do in everything that I do and I am going to start off by throwing everything up in the air, trying new things, trying different ways of doing things and I'm going to start off with a pond because I love ponds, they are beautiful and the first thing I need to do is mark out where I want to place it. Then what I would usually do is dig it out, fill it up with water and then start adding some mossy stones, some mossy slabs etc etc and then decorate it but today I'm going to start off by building the entire pond, adding the mossy stone and then plan some of the surroundings before I start to add the water and that looks like a very good pond shape to me. So the next step is of course to start digging it all out. And there we go the first layer has been dug and I want to make this about three layers deep because I want to make a pond not a puddle. And to do that I'm just going to start over here, bring it in a little bit and dig out the next layer. So I'll just go around the entire thing, dig out the next layer and then I think I'll dig out one more after that. And um, okay well that's a little bit of a problem but it's alright we'll fix that right up. However it is getting very dark and I haven't lit up this area so I think I need to go to bed and continue in the morning. And it's the next day I finished digging out the pond and if we look at it right now it, it, it still looks a little bit rough but it's a good place to start and the next thing I need to do is add some of the cobblestone, some mossy cobblestone and make some rocks all around the place and that presents a tiny bit of a problem. I don't have much moss, I think I have about two stacks at the very best. I have tons and tons of cobblestone because I dug out the area to build the cathedral 
but I think I am going to need a lot more moss than I currently have in my inventory to make this whole thing work. So let's first pack up all of our goodies over here and then let's fly over to the warehouse, go check out the moss situation and see what we need to do about that. And hey, I missed the door this time. Alright, so our unloader has done its job, we've got a bunch of empty shulker boxes, everything from the cathedral build has been put into its proper place, so I think we might need to grab a few of those, but first let's check out the supplies, and yeah, that's, that's, that's quite a bit of cobblestone over there. Our calcite has also been put in the proper place, but I think the thing that we are most interested in right now is moss, so let's go check out the supply. And yeah, we had about three stacks of moss in stock, but this gives me an opportunity to kill two birds with one stone because I want to level this mountain next to the castle over here. And I think one of the easiest ways to do that is to moss the entire place up, use a hoe and harvest all of that beautiful moss, which will of course also give me plenty of moss blocks. So I'm going to start right over here, just place a block of moss in there. And then we'll bone meal the area. We still have plenty of bone meal because we have an awesome skeleton farm. And once this is done, we can also start bringing down the level of this mountain, make it level with the rest of the castle grounds because I have got some great ideas for this area. But this might take quite a while. So I think let's speed things up with a bit of a time lapse. <laughs> And there we go, the mountain has been brought down quite a few levels and we have a ton of moss and I think that is enough for now after all. I don't want to spend this entire episode just digging down a mountain. But if we land here and take a look you'll see it hasn't come down as much as I had hoped but it has come down a few levels. It's a good start nonetheless and we have a ton of moss which is exactly what we need to start working on our pond. So let's get into it, let's jump down and let's go build our pond. And the first thing of course that I'm going to do is just start placing some mossy cobblestone all around. I need to replace some of the floor, perhaps some of the side and then I'm going to use the cobblestone slabs to make it a little bit more of a pond or bowl shape. So let's start over here, replace those two. And then I think down here we can put in some mossy cobblestone as well. Now I don't want to make the whole thing mossy cobblestone because that would just look pretty nasty. I'll also see about keeping some of this uh, pod sole over here. See if that survives being drenched in water. And that could also make for an interesting bottom of the pond. But of course the first step is to replace some of the blocks on the side and get those slabs in as well. And I'm just going to go all around, replace some of these areas with some mossy cobblestone. And there we go, just look at that. We've got our slabs in, we've got our mossy cobblestone in and I'm just going to make a few rocks on the side of the pond because you need some mossy rocks on the side of the pond. Now, I'm not sure how this is going to look. As I said, I'm doing it differently. And this is step one. I would usually do this after I've added the water. But today, I'm just going to trust the process. I know this is what I usually do. And it turns out all right most of the times. Let's see how it works when I do it in reverse. Now, let's just add a few more stones to the front over here. I think I might need to replace some of this mossy cobblestone with some normal regular cobblestone later. But first, I just want to get the entire shape done and then we can start fine tuning it. And there we go. The entire pond has been laid out. I've added some regular cobblestone to the mossy cobblestone and it might be looking a little bit strange right now. But I think once we get the water in there, it's going to look absolutely phenomenal. So with that done, I think the next step is to start planning the area around the pond. And the first thing I need to do is add some paths going around the pond on both sides and I want to make it sort of in line with this pillar over here. For now I'm just going to lay it out with some path blocks but I don't want to keep it just straight path blocks because I've done that a hundred times and I'm going to try something different on that as well. But first I need to get it to curve around the pond over here nice and tight. 
get the basic layout and shape done for the path and then we can start to actually fill the pond and get an idea of what it will actually look like. And it seems that Podsole does survive being submerged in water, which is great. It'll add an extra bit of texture to the bottom of the pond. Whether it's going to look good, I don't know yet, but we're going to give it a try. And we shouldn't take too long to fill up this pond. Uh, come on, as long as I can stop doing stupid things like this, we should be done in no time. And that's not where that's supposed to go. And we are almost done. The last few buckets are going in. And the pond has been filled and I really do think it looks pretty darn good. Let's take to the skies, get an aerial view of what we've done and oh yes, that does look good. I think it looks more natural than the one I've done over there. And I think this is a great start to this area. Now, of course, the next thing I need to do is the paths. And yes, I really do like that. So as I've mentioned before, I've been doing the path block paths surrounded by some coarse dirt since before I started this series and it's time to shake things up. Because while this has been looking alright in the past, I want to go for more than alright, I want to go for phenomenal and that means this path needs to be something special as well. And for that, the first thing I'm going to need to do is dig up this path. So we're just going to dig out one layer of this path. I didn't double dirt over here. As you can see, I will replace that and I'll replace that one as well, of course. But we need to remove all of these path blocks. And as I said, this was just going to be a guide for us to start working from. I'm doing things differently and as such, I'm going to be doing this path by using coarse dirt and then some packed mud. And the first thing going in will, of course, be the coarse dirt. And with the coarse dirt in place, the next thing going in is the packed mud. And there we go, the path is done and it is looking incredible. It actually makes all of the other paths I've done so far look quite terrible. And with the addition of a few bushes, I think the path is done. It's time to move on to the next thing. And that is going to be a custom spruce tree over here. If I can get onto the wall, that'll be phenomenal. There we go. And in spirit of doing things differently, I am using some packed mud brick walls to make the trunk of the spruce tree. And with the trunk all done, it's time to start adding the leaves. And for this tree, I'm going to be using a mix of spruce and birch leaves. And this should be the end of it. We have reached the tippy top. So let's take down our dirt scaffolding and let's see what our tree looks like. Now, if I'm correct, this should be looking amazing. But hey, I've been known to be wrong before. And I think before we take a look at the tree itself, let's fix the potholes we've created. Let's take a step back and let's admire our handiwork. And um, yeah, uh, I wouldn't say that screams greatness. I think this tree might need a little bit of retooling. And take two. Here we go. Yes, that looks a ton better. I am happy with that. And with the first tree down, it is time to start adding a few more. Now I want to add a birch tree, an oak tree, another spruce or two. And then of course, we still need to decorate the pond as well. So there's a lot of work to be done here. And I think the best way for us to do it is to jump into a time lapse and make this area look absolutely phenomenal. Let's go.
and we are done and I must say I think it is looking fantastic. I'm not 100% sure about the arch in front, um, it was added as a last minute afterthought. Perhaps it's not the right fit here, let me know what you think in the comments below. Should I keep it, should I remove it? I am not 100% sure, but the rest of the area is looking absolutely brilliant. I love the paths, I love the pond and doing things a little bit differently sometimes helps a lot. I've got some fish in the pond as well, so let's see how they survive. But now it's time to move on. And the next thing I want to do is work on the cliff over here. Now I've already started and what I want to do is create a little bit of an overhang at the top. Using some dirt, I'm just going to build it all out, get the basic shape of what I want to do over here. So let's just work our way down here, get a nice blend of the overhang into the cliff itself. And then once this is done, I'll hop down and blend in the bottom as well. But for now, we're just going to work on the shape at the top, maybe get it going down a little bit more gradual. And I think this is starting to look pretty good as well. We can't leave the cliff as it was because just the sheer drop looks really lazy and we want to go for a beautiful polished look. And with the top and bottom blended in, it's time to add a little bit of moss hanging over the sides. And to do that, I'm going to be using some leaves. Just have them cascading over the sides, perhaps one or two bushes at the top. And then they are going to be dropping from the top over there, just cascading down the side of the cliff. And I think I'm just going to go around adding some leaves as I go. So let's just build out our little scaffolding here. And I think this is as good spot as any to add the next bunch of moss dropping down from the cliff. So we start over there, just bring it down. And eventually these will all hang at different heights. So with the top done, I'm just adding a few bushes around the bottom. Let's not go too overboard. I want to sort of create a mix between hanging and sitting on the ground. And I think we are pretty much done. So let's fly out. Let's take a look at our cliff. And that's not bad at all. However, it is not quite perfect just yet. I think we are missing some stone. As you can see, all the cliffs around it has some stone. And I think we need to add some stone to this one as well, just to make it blend in with the surroundings a bit better. However, I have a problem. And that problem is that I have tons and tons of stone, but I am fresh out of andesite. And I want to use some andesite just to create a different color mixture between the two. Now I've been flying around looking for some patches of andesite and I found one over there. It doesn't look very big to be honest, but maybe it goes deep into the mountain. Either way, I'll have to hop over and check. And the sad news is it was not a big patch of andesite stretching into the mountain. It was literally a one block veneer of andesite giving me just over one stack, which is not enough at all. Now I didn't feel like going into the caves to find some andesite, but it seems I have no choice. So into the darkest depths I venture to seek my prize. And what a prize, just look at this. I have found the mother load of andesite. There are tons and tons of it here. In fact, I don't even know if I'm gonna be harvesting all of it. It is an absolutely massive patch. It is on the roof, it is in the walls, it is everywhere. And I'm gonna collect as much of this as I can. I've got a shulker box that I want to fill up, but I don't wanna spend my entire day in the cave. So I'm gonna get as much of this as I can because I always need some andesite and having extra won't hurt. And it was an absolutely massive patch. Oh, creeper, creeper, let's get rid of this guy. Take that. Huh. Two arrows for you, sir. And then this is the actual last of the andesite up here. And we have got an absolute ton of this stuff. I've spent way too much time down here digging it all up. And this is finally the last patch. So that was quite fruitful. If you want to know how many I've collected, take a look at this. One shulker box, pretty much full of andesite. And that is more than enough to build our cliff. And with that done, let's get out of here because I am sick of this cave. And we're back topside. It is raining, but we have our andesite. We have our stone. We have some tough and some deep slate as well. And it's time to transform this cliff. 
Let's get started. And there we go ladies and gents, our cliff is completed and it's looking rather amazing. Along with our praying angel sitting on top of it in front of the cathedral, I think this view is quite spectacular. And I'm also extremely pleased with this area over here. It is looking beautiful and doing things differently certainly has delivered. But that ladies and gents is unfortunately all we have time for today. I really do hope you enjoyed the episode, leave a like if you did, and if you want to see some more, be sure to hit the subscribe button. But this is Fungosaurus Rex saying, until next time beautiful people, stay awesome, bye bye.